Hello and welcome to the program today. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. I'm talking today with Dr. John Wong, Chief of Cardiac Catheterization for the MedStar Heart and Vascular Institute at MedStar Union Memorial Hospital, and he's with us today to discuss advances in dissolvable cardiac stents. Welcome to Health Professional Radio today, Dr. Wong. Thank you, Neil, for inviting me. Thank you. Um, now, uh, you're Chief of Cardiac Catheterization. I'm, I'm sure you weren't with MedStar for your entire career. Tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah, thanks, Neil. I actually grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, where I went to school and then uh, went to college at University of Chicago and medical school at the Prisker School of Medicine in Chicago as well. I met my wife in Chicago, and she's from Boston, so we both did our training at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Harvard. Mm -hmm. And uh, seven years later, after doing my uh, internship, residency, fellowship, and school of public health degree, I came down to Baltimore, and I've been in practice ever since. I've been with uh, MedStar and at Union Memorial Hospital and been the chief here since 2006, so mm -hmm. it's uh, just over 10 years that I've been in this position. Now, dissolvable cardiac stents, um, you see there, there are some advances that we need to talk about. Were stents the norm, and how long have they been the norm, and why is dissolvable better than non-dissolvable? You know. Yeah, these are great questions. I mean, I think what... Um, People have known about stents for a long time, and stents are these little mesh uh, metallic tubes that we have actually implanted in people's coronary arteries or the arteries that feed the heart to prop open blockages that are due to cholesterol narrowings. Mm -hmm. You know, in the most extreme situation when the blood vessel is 100% blocked, that's when patients have heart attacks. So metallic stents have been around since the mid-80s, and we use these to literally prop open these blockages. Mm -hmm. They're very, very small, and they work very well, um, but they are permanent, and once you implant that stent in a vessel, it stays with you for good. There's no way to take it out. Ah. Now, in the vast majority of people, Neil, it does not cause problems, but in under 1%, uh, people that do have problems with stents, mm -hmm. it, it is thought uh, potentially due to the fact that the body does not like to have that foreign material in there um, and is, uh, in a way, trying to reject that metallic stent. Okay. Now, once that uh, rejection takes place, are we talking catastrophic failure? Uh, for the most part, no. Typically what happens is people end up having scar tissue uh, formation inside of the metallic stent, mm -hmm. and these metallic stents initially were just that, what we called bare metal stents with no drug coating or polymer coating. But as the advances have occurred, in 2003, we developed drug-coated stents, and these drug-coated stents have a uh, anti-rejection medicine uh, that coats the inside of it. So when the body tries to narrow down that metallic st stent with scar tissue and grow inside of it, this drug actually prevents that in the vast majority of times. Even with these advances, though, there are still a small number of patients uh, that will get re-narrowing or, or uh, closure of these stents long-term, and that could be due to the inflammation from the metal or the polymer that's, in, uh, that's used to um, stabilize the drug on these stents. Are they similar in uh, composition to those that prevent clotting? Uh, no, actually, they're usually anti-rejection medicines that are given in transplant-type patients. Mm -hmm. So the most common one, the most effective one used now is Everolimus. Really what happens is uh, stents have been, as far as, as since they were developed, made out of some sort of metal. And uh, it wasn't until recently uh, that in um, July 5th of this summer that the FDA approved the first completely bioresorbable stent. And this stent is called the Absorb stent, and it actually is made of a high-grade plastic or polymer. It's very flexible. It is the first generation of its device, so it's not as easy to deliver or low profile as the metallic stents. But its advantage is that once you deliver it to the blood vessel that's blocked and you expand that stent, this metal, uh, excuse me, this plastic polymer absorbable stent, over two to three years, the body actually dissolves that stent and by three years, you're left with your own blood vessel without anything permanent in there. So it completely gets absorbed. It, there's, it doesn't ever cause any blockage itself in the process. Nothing, uh, nothing like that has been absorbed. Correct. So, so this stent is actually um, 
undergoes what's called a hydrolysis reaction. And so molecule by molecule, it's replaced under hydrolysis reaction, and you're left with water and carbon dioxide. So the advantage of this is that uh, a question I often get from people that hear about this the first time is that don't you need the stent to be there permanently to prop the blood vessel open? And the answer to that is no. And that typically over six to nine months when the body has remodeled the blood vessel after you push the blockage to the outside, that is now the shape of the blood vessel. It does not need to have that metallic permanent stent there to prop it open anymore. It just happened to be in the past. There was no way to actually get rid of that metallic stent. Now, with this bioabsorbable stent, it gets um, absorbed or dissolves uh, over two to three years uh, after it's implanted. And again, by three years, you're left with the body's own blood vessel and restored normal function of being able to constrict and dilate as in normal, but with no confined metal cage left there behind. Can you tell who the good candidate for these types of stents, or are we talking about totally replacing non-dissolvable? It's a good question. You know, just to give you some background, there are almost a million stenting procedures in the coronary arteries done in the United States per year. And uh, the patients, I would say, that already have metallic stents, you should not worry. They're very safe. They're very effective. But as with all things and all technologies, uh, and especially in the field of medicine and interventional cardiology, they're always iterating. They're always looking for the next improvement and the next best thing. And this is really the first step towards that. Now, this is a first-generation device. So like I stated, it's a little bit bulkier than some of the fine-tuned metallic stents. So not all candidates, uh, patients are going to be good candidates for this. There are going to be some le- blood vessels that are too small to put this stent in. There are going to be some blood vessels that are too tortuous, uh, which means the blood vessel takes too many turns and bends for this type of device. Um, and so this is not going to be for every single person that needs a stent. But it's the first generation of the uh, technology. I suspect within 10 years, there are going to be many new improvements even upon this one that in the future, this very well could be the way all coronary stents uh, are, are used, which are ones that are all dissolvable. It will not be this particular one, but this is the first of that uh, type of stent. Have you um, been able to um, identify a, a transition between, I guess, the cost effectiveness of the traditional stents as opposed to these brand new uh, advanced stents that dissolve. I mean, they are FDA approved, but are they currently being covered by insurance providers, or is that something that's in the work? No, these are uh, covered by insurance providers, Mm -hmm. and um, they do come at a slight premium uh, um, to the regular uh, metallic uh, drug-eluting stents, but a very, very minor uh, premium and really negligible. Now, where can our listeners go and get more information about dissolvable cardiac stents? Well, I think they can uh, Google the MedStar Heart and Vascular Institute or MedStar Union Memorial Hospital, and on their webpage they can uh, certainly uh, search out cardiac procedures and stents. In general, if they wanted to, they could look up the absorb stent or bioabsorbable uh, coronary stents as uh, keywords and uh, find out more information. Well, I thank you for talking with us today, Doctor. All right. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, with Dr. John Wong, Chief of Cardiac Catheterization for the MedStar Heart and Vascular Institute at MedStar Union Memorial Hospital. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm, and you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes.